The new Salomon S-Lab Cross 2 really does look like it's been beamed down from outer space by aliens. It's such a wicked shoe. But in today's video, we're gonna be giving you a few facts and figures about this trail running speed machine from Salomon, and then we're gonna be bringing you guys along on its first run. So let's dive into the video and find out if the S-Lab Cross 2 runs as good as it looks. Welcome back, or if you're new to the channel, then welcome, it's great to have you along. I'm Lloyd Purvis, and this is Run For Adventure. Now, for those of you new to running or new to trail running, the Salomon S-Lab Cross 2 is a high performance, soft ground trail running shoe. It's been developed to run super quick on very technical, wet, muddy, boggy trails. So it should perform really well here in the UK, especially in winter conditions. The S-Lab range from Salomon always tends to bring us their most technically advanced products full of lots of exciting new trail running innovations and the new S-Lab Cross 2 is no exception. They also tend to have a lot of input when it comes to the design and the development phase from their pro athletes and Norwegian trailblazer Stian Angermund put a lot of work into the new version of the S-Lab Cross. The iridescent high-vis overlays on the upper are supposed to represent the Aurora Borealis from his native country of Norway. So let's give you a few facts and figures really quickly and then we're going to get outside hit the trails and put this shoe through its paces so it retails for 165 pounds here in the uk and it weighs in a pretty light 250 grams in a men's uk 10 it runs off a four mil heel offset and it comes with a nice and aggressive deep 6.5 mil lug on the outsole Obviously, the standout feature of the shoe has to be this very different design on the upper using this ankle gaitered concept. That's been designed to give you a very precise fit around your foot, but also to offer you maximum levels of protection when you're running in challenging conditions. Like a lot of brands at the moment, Salomon have chosen to use matrix fabric in the upper construction to offer high levels of breathability, but it's also super durable. We've got some overlays worked down from the heel around the midfoot and around the lace eyelets for a bit of extra durability. And I love the fact that we've got this sort of iridescent high vis on them overlays. Uh, looks super cool when you're picked out by headlights, but also offers high levels of visibility when you're running at night. It comes with Salomon's brilliant speed lace system, so no old school laces on this shoe. That would have looked far too outdated on such a futuristic shoe. So we've got their cord system, literally pull that cord tight and then slide that plastic housing down and you are locked into the shoe. We've got a nice little pocket in the tongue to stow that lace away so you don't get snagged or caught on anything while you're running. A, a really good lacing system once you're used to it, makes it very quick and easy to get in and out of your shoes. Although with this gated upper system, maybe not so easy to get in and out of these shoes. And it is a little bit of a struggle, but once you're in, you are definitely in. Moving down to the midsole and the S-Lab Cross is definitely not a deeply rockered, cushioned trail running shoe, which I actually find really Really refreshing in today's market where every shoe seems to be deeply cushioned, soft and really bouncy. Uh, this shoe's been designed for the complete opposite. It's all about giving you the ultimate connection, ultimate ground feel. So when you're bombing and running quick over technical trails, you feel fully connected and super stable. You've got a 12.5 mil stack height under the forefoot and 16.5 under the heel. The compound used in that midsole is pretty firm. So like I said, it's all about ultimate levels of connection in the shoe. And then on the outsole, we've got that very aggressive, deep looking 6.5 mil lug. And that outsole has been clad in Salomon's stickiest rubber to date, Contagrip TA. So in theory, the S-Lab Cross 2 should give me great levels of grip and traction on all surfaces. So there you have it, a bit of information on the high performing S-Lab Cross 2 from Salomon, but I'm itching to get these shoes on my feet and to go and attack some trails. We are heading up to Tahiti Woods today, the perfect testing
testing ground for the first run in this shoe. It's gonna be pretty wet, pretty muddy, pretty slippery. We've got lots of rocky section, off camber sections, but also lots of wet tree roots to deal with. So it's gonna be a challenge for this shoe. So let's get kitted up, grab the cameras, and let's get running. So we have made it down into Tahiti Woods. Been a long time since I've run in the woods and it's good to be back. I think the last time we came down to sort of test a shoe out was when we did the Nike Terra Kyger review and that was very disappointing. So hopefully this is gonna be a much more positive experience. Believe it or not, there is nine miles of trail within the woods and it seems like a very small area, but trails run off in every direction. And we got lots of different types of trails as well. So hard standing like we're on now, muddy trails and lots of tree roots to deal with. So it's gonna be a great place for that first impressions run in this new Salomon shoe. You also get a nice bit of shelter in here. So it is very blustery out there today. So hopefully being in here, being a bit more sheltered, the audio quality is gonna be okay. Right, so that's a mile down. And like I said, back at the flat, this is definitely an aggressive trail shoe. A little bit more cushioning in the midsole than I first imagined, but definitely aggressive. Loving the fit of that upper with that ankle gaiter. I feel really locked in, dialed into that upper, super safe in the upper. So, you know, moving quickly in technical areas, you feel really connected underfoot. But like I said, it's definitely a, an aggressive trail shoe. You really do want to be running on a midfoot, forefoot strike. It is not set up for someone running more dominantly on their heels, but yeah. A mile down and so far so good, but let's carry on, let's get running. Wow, we're about three miles into the run now. And this is a fun time shoe. So good to be back in a Salomon S Lab shoe product. Uh, you can't help but run quick and attack the trails. You wanna find the most technical areas and run as quick as possible. Such an exciting shoe to run in. Like I said, it is 100% a performance related shoe. This is not for going out on a nice bimble along the trails. This is a race day shoe. Again, where you're gonna be attacking the trails as quick as possible. So. I'm gonna go and find some more trails and have some more fun. I am loving this shoe so far. It's great to be back in the woods. The body is feeling really good. And like I said, it's awesome running in this new S-Lab Cross too. So thumbs up all round. We are just heading into the area of the run that's really going to test the shoe out. So we're just about to go on this super techie ridge line. Really wet, wet, really muddy, super twisty and turny. Lots of off camber and lots of tricky wet tree roots. So this is going to be a big test for the levels of whoop, grip and traction on this outsole, but also for how responsive and how connected the shoe feels, but I'm gonna turn the cameras off because I'm gonna fall over in a minute, super challenging, and I'll see you at the other side.
Now that is what this shoe is made for. It literally started raining as soon as I hit that super technical ridge line. So everything got wet really quick. So lots of wet leaves on the ground the whole way along, lots of wet roots to deal with. And as trail runners, we all know how lethal they are. And the outsole grip on this shoe was fantastic. In the past, I have been let down by some of the Salomon rubbers not being consistent. Um, I still haven't quite run any wet rock in it. So it'd be interesting to see how it handles that. But all the stuff along that ridge, brilliant. You know, I never doubted the grip once and I felt super dialed in, really responsive shoe. You know, like I said, that's what this shoe's built for. So we've got about two miles to go in the run to get back to the car. It is absolutely chucking it down. Another good reason to come and run in the woods because you get a nice bit of shelter from the rain. And we've got a map here. There's been a lot of work done onto Hiddy Woods lately. So they've put a lot more points of reference, a lot more maps up so you can see where you're going. But if I zoom in a bit, you can see there the Tahiti Woods link up to the mining trails around Cornwall as well. So um, you can get miles and miles of running in around here. So if you're ever in Cornwall, Tahiti Woods is definitely worth a visit. Lots of wildlife, got lots of psycho squirrels. Uh, I've also seen some blue jays, a buzzard, some cows, a robin, lots of stuff going on. Great place to come for a dog walk or to bring your kids or even do a bit of mountain biking. But like I said, a couple of miles to go, so let's get running. change of clothes have a quick drink but what a great first outing so good to be back into Hiddy Woods always an exciting place to run and the body felt really good uh, talking about wildlife earlier couldn't believe how many squirrels are out there I mean you always tend to see a couple but they were everywhere I couldn't believe it but they looked really really healthy as well people must have been down here feeding them up but uh, if I'm fully honest I, I never really trust squirrels I don't know about you but I always find they look a little bit psychotic so I'm a little bit wary of them but uh, anyway great first run as far as how did the shoe perform really impressed definitely a better first impressions run than last time i came down here in the nike terra kyger and i was slipping and tripping all over the place uh, outstanding features on that first run have to be the upper loving that ankle gaiter it fitted so well around my foot and i felt really locked into the midfoot and the outsole performance brilliant on every type of terrain and i've pretty much run over everything on this run roots, rocks, wet leaves, and I even had to do a bit of tarmac at the end there, about half a mile of tarmac, and that was wet as well because we had a heavy downpour. And I felt super connected, really grippy on everything. So uh, we're gonna head back home, dive into a bit more details about the performance of the shoe. Just before I do that, uh, I'm modeling our new beanie hats that have just launched in the merch store. Um, really, really comfortable, really warm double knit beanie hats. They're available in four different colors, um, including this rather fetching mustard color that I'm modeling now. And they are made from 50% recycled fabric. So go and check them out. It's a great way of supporting the channel and they're all available in the merch store on runforadventure.uk. But anyway, let's get back home and let's go into a bit more detail about how this shoe has performed. We've made it back, we've had a quick shower and a shave, so let's go into a bit more details about our first experience running in this Salomon Trail shoe. The first thing I've got to say is, it actually wasn't as aggressive or as a firmer ride as I thought it was going to be. Uh, the shoe ran pretty comfortable. Don't, don't get me wrong, it's not a deeply cushioned pair of comfy slippers, but I felt pretty comfortable out on the trails. Uh, you can definitely feel uh, the ground through the midsole. You feel really connected to what you're running on, but there is a bit of cushioning in that midsole. I'd say I'd be happy to sort of run the shoe up to half marathon distance, 20 miles on the trails, and maybe I could even push through to a marathon in it if I was feeling brave. But I think where this shoe would sit for me is those races, 10K, 10 milers, half marathons, when you're pushing pace, you're running quickly, especially if the route is on challenging technical trails. My calves do feel a little bit tight after the run, and I think that's just because this shoe really does 
want to get you up onto your forefoot. And a lot of that is down to the profile of that midsole. If we look at it there, you can see how narrow the shoe is at that heel. And I think it's one of the narrowest heels I've ever seen on a trail running shoe. I think the best way to show it, if I hold up the Ultra Glides there next to it, that really highlights how narrow. The Ultra Glides are almost twice as wide as the S-Lab shoe when it comes to that heel counter. So like I said, I can't emphasize it enough that if you feel you are quite heavy, quite dominant when you run on your heels, when you're out on the trails, then this probably isn't gonna be a great shoe to run in. And I think it'd be very, very unstable, especially in technical areas, down to that heel profile. So you really do need to be a sort of midfoot, forefoot runner when you're running in these bad boys. A really good test for grip and traction out there today. And this is why Tahiti Woods is such a great testing ground for trail running shoes this time of year. We had deep mud, loose gravel, wet tarmac, leaves, wet tree roots, and we even had to deal with a few sketchy, greasy wooden bridge crossings, which can always be a challenge for our trail running shoes. And I have to say, the outsole passed with flying colours. The deep lug pan performed really well in the deep boggy mud and on the loose stuff, but it was actually the rubber compound on that outsole that impressed me the most. That ridge line that we ran is about as technical and about as slippery as it gets. Uh, this time of the year, all the leaves have fallen on the ground, so it's covering up all those nasty trip hazards, and it just started pouring down with rain when I started running that ridge, so pretty challenging conditions, and I didn't slip once in the shoe. You feel so connected and dialed in as well through that midsole. So I felt very confident on my foot in. So it's definitely a big thumbs up all round when it comes down to outsole performance. I also just need to mention quickly, as far as grip goes, we had to run across a couple of boarded wooden sections in the woods. And normally those sections have got sort of chicken wire stretched across them to give you a bit of grip and traction just for a bit of health and safety. Where people have walked over them boards for years and years and years, it's kind of worn away. So I was literally out there running on greasy, wet wood, and I was really amazed how grippy this outsole was. You know, I've had some pretty sketchy times on wet wood in trail shoes in the past, but um, this rubber felt actually pretty sticky and pretty tacky, even on wet wood, which pretty unbelievable. So this new Contagrip TA compound on the S-Lab shoe is super sticky. Moving on to the Matrix Upper in this quite unique ankle gaiter design. This fabric feels super breathable around your foot, but all I can really say is, I want this upper system on more of my trail running shoes. I absolutely love it and the feel it gives me. Yes, it is quite hard to get in the shoe. You do have to fight your way in it, but once you're in it, you're definitely in and it just becomes an extension of your foot. It is great fitting, foot hugging, but you also feel very safe and very well protected from stones, mud, twigs, and other trail debris. And that's because of this high ankle gaiter design. So all in all, a great first run in the Salomon S-Lab Cross 2s. And if I'm honest, I just wanna get them back on my feet and get out on the trails again. So definitely gonna continue running in the shoe. Really interested to see how it does handle those longer efforts once my body allows me to do them. And we'll definitely definitely be back with a full in-depth review on this shoe on the channel very soon. I left a link in the description for the S-Lab Cross 2s if you want to find out any more info, but also if you've been running in it, it'd be great to hear about your experience. So let us know in the comments below. Really hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Really hope you found it helpful and you enjoyed seeing some of the beautiful trails that I get to run on down here in Cornwall. Uh, this is why I love doing these first impressions videos because we get to highlight a new shoe and give you a few details, but we also get to bring you guys out on the trails with us and that's just awesome. Uh, don't forget, we've still got two giveaways running. We've got the Nightcore UT27 Head Torch giveaway and our giveaway extravaganza. There is some amazing prizes up for grabs, guys. Um, you've got until the 23rd of December to get entered, so not long. I've left links below in the description for the two videos that you need to go and watch and then get in the mix. You don't want to miss out. Um, there's going to be three very lucky winners come Christmas Eve in our Christmas Eve special. Uh, but for now, guys, thanks for watching. It's always appreciated. Thanks for the support. We will see you back here very soon. And as always, stay safe and keep on running.